Welcome to The Snack, a lighter serving of Girls Gotta Eat. This is a Dear Media production. Enjoy. Hi, guys. <laughs> You're engaged. I'm engaged. They said it couldn't be done. She did it. It really happened. <laughs> what, like it's hard? And we're recording on Beyonce's birthday. <laughs> Uh, oh my god! Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> How do you feel? Do you feel like a different person? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't know. We'll get to it. I don't know how to describe it. I feel like the same, but so different. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we have so, we have so much to talk about. We have an update on my eye. My eye. I'm engaged now. The third character in this engagement. We're here in New York recording this. Anna's with us. Anna's with us. And Remy. Remy's with us. If you guys <laughs> listen to our episode with, it was with Serena Kerrigan. Remy was the main character of that. Yeah. So and some people in the comments were shipping. Oh, Remy, what do you think? Love comments. <laughs> okay. Well, love you too. Uh, <laughs> well, Remy, Remy has to get engaged in one year. So Are you interested? <laughs> Are you interested in proposing to me? No, I get 14 months. You did it in 14 months. Okay. 15 months? I'm just saying I want to I don't want to give myself a 12 month timeline that's not fair okay all right 14 15 <laughs> all right well we're on it okay well let's just thank our sponsors and then like let's get into it because I know you guys are like chomping at the bit yeah, as yeah, am yeah. I uh, thanks to Rocket Money cancel your unwanted subscriptions at rocketmoney.com slash GGE and watch the Hulu original series The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives all episodes now streaming on Hulu and thanks to Seed, get 25% off at VS01 at seed.com slash GGE with code 25GGE. So I have to tell all of you guys, I didn't know when we were going to record this because <sighs> we pre-recorded the episode for Monday. For, yeah. And Ashley literally, I, I suggested not doing that. And Ashley said to me, what's going to happen between now and then? Probably <laughs> nothing. And I was like, damn it. Well, we couldn't really do it. I don't know. I don't know when we would have done it. Do. So I wasn't even supposed to come to New York. <laughs> And I was going to stay in Delaware, and today that the episode drops Thursday, I'm heading to Ohio to officiate my cousin's wedding, and then I'm going to be there for a couple of days, and then going to Boston, whatever. So in the interim between being in Dewey and being in Ohio, I was just going to stay in Delaware with my family, and we were going to do this episode virtually, and I was like, we can't do that. I felt really sad about it. So Raina she knew how to get me to New York, the weather... <laughs> She checked the weather and she was like, it's going to be 75 and sunny and clear. And I was like, okay, so I guess I'll come. I'm sick of taking trips without you. Yes. So now you're here. I'm here. We're just going to do this in person. And it's going to just be all about the engagement. I don't know. Uncomfortable. I don't need to make this like all ab ab about me. But it's like what people like said I have to people. I was bullied into I it. I said you have to. Yeah. But I crowdsourced on Instagram and was like, what do you questions do you guys have about the engagement or pop culture? And they were like, fuck you for even mentioning pop culture. This is our pop culture. We need everything. Spare no details. Yeah, you know where do you go wanna, hard? Where do you want to start? Okay. Also, you guys have just been like so excited about it. Yeah. So, so thank you. Number one question that made me laugh. Okay. That people wrote when I crowdsourced. Did Raina know? Is Raina okay? <laughs> no, not is Raina okay. I mean. <laughs> Everybody should whatever. I'm insulted by the sentiment. Yes, Raina is super happy. Raina's great. Well, Raina can speak for herself. <laughs> okay, so did I know? That's did, a crazy Raina, question. Did Raina know? Who do you think planned this? What? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. And how long did Raina know? And how much Raina was involved? And so I'll kick it to Raina from the beginning of ever. I don't know. I don't. When exactly did you find find out? I mean, I mean, I've known always. I mean, he also designed the ring with a friend of ours. So like, I've known since then. I mean, I've known since like February. <laughs> I've I've been knowing. And you, I mean, it's not that you knew this was going to happen, but like, I think you've always wanted to get engaged in Dewey and hoped it would be then. And so obviously, like him and I together were like. This is when to do it. This yeah. is when everybody's going to be there. This is like when everybody's naturally going to be down there. And it's been really nice. I will say, like, I don't think that you, the general you, spend a lot of time talking to your friend's partners one on one. Ew, I would like never. <laughs> like if he ever like sent me like a solo text, I'd be like, gross, what are you doing here? <laughs> but, so I don't think that like in the general sense, you get to spend a lot of one on one time talking to your friend's partners. And I've enjoyed like getting to know him a little bit more through this because like otherwise, why would we ever text each other like a solo text? Yeah. So I've known the whole time. Um, and like, I mean, that's a really long time. Yeah. Like, it's, I don't know. It's, that's, that's rough to do to somebody. I've been in hell, Ashley. Cause I see you every minute of every day. So I keep him on mute. 
Yeah, I was hearing about all the muted group chats. All of it. And then during the weekend, people were missing important texts because they'd muted. So he, my fiance, spelled like Beyonce, um, he missed a text from a freak, our photographer, because he had to mute it. You know, like there was just, it was, everybody had to unmute. I had to mute everybody because, so anyways, the whole thing was, of course, his idea, but, you know, I wanted to pitch in and try to make things special, so I, like, contacted a few people and also, like, coordinated with all your girlfriends, our girlfriends, but more your friends, uh, to make sure that, like, everybody knew, like, this is a priority. Get child care, be there, come get down, make sure that, like, you know, you make it a priority to be there at this time, whatever. So I did all that with him and your family and everybody, so I just made sure that all the T's were crossed and the, the I's were dotted. I just, like... I'll do it for you, but I, it will be really hard. Like, it's just, I really am so appreciative of you. That's a really long time so to know that. Like, stressful. Yeah. my um, best friend, Corey's husband, Ham, I mean, quick in, in engagement. Like, they met and started dating in January of 2015. And he, um, we were recapping this this past weekend. He told me in May, I didn't even have his phone number. He had messaged me on Facebook and be like, hey, can we talk? In May that he wanted to propose. I was like, this is crazy. They've been dating like four months, you know, and then proposed in October. And so that was a long time for me to know. So long. But I don't see her all the fucking time, you know. So I don't know. I just think that's a lot to keep and just to be coordinating with everybody. And so I just could not like appreciate you more. I think there was like little things that Raina just maybe vetoed or changed or made sure was absolutely perfect. And everybody should have a friend like that. Oh, thanks. Well, it was really fun for me. And yeah, I waited until the last minute to tell people because I didn't want to, I didn't want it out there for too long. Like I just, I yeah. needed to be on a group text with Laura, Corey, and Lee to make sure that Corey absolutely came. Yeah. But Laura kicked people out of her pool party at 4 p.m. on Saturday. So I wanted to make sure you had time to take a shower and look nice before the next event. Yeah. Um, so everybody just really pitched in. But I also didn't, I didn't tell anybody because you were like, you asked me and you're like, does that blah, 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 blah. No. And I was like, no, I didn't want to like steal your thunder. So like I, had, we had hung out with so many people that are close friends of ours that I also did not tell. Yeah. So that was, that is actually what killed me more. I didn't tell Tessa. Yeah. And I just and like wanted Brittany you to have your moment yeah. to tell people. Right. So that was actually much harder than not telling you. Taylor got to know because she had some ring input. Yeah. I want to do an update on my eye <laughs> because everyone was like, what happened with your eye? So last week on the snack, I said that I was diagnosed with blepharitis, which was wrong. And I diagnosed myself the next day and I was right. And that is not the first time this year I've diagnosed myself and a doctor has been wrong. What is going on with these doctors? No, I'm kidding. I'm sure they're great, but it's it keeps happening. But you're better. It keeps happening that I'm telling a doctor what's wrong with me. And then they're like, oh, that seems about right. So this happened with a dermatologist and it's just been kind of crazy. So I just didn't feel like that was correct, that that was what it was. There's some like symptoms of blepharitis that I just didn't have. And then it started to look more like a sty. Or, and so I realized I started doing research and I was like, I think it is what's called a shalazion. All this sounds made up. Chalazion. Chalazion. C H A L A Z I O N. Chalazion. Can you believe there's just all these words out there in the world that you've never heard Crazy. of until it happens to you? So I'm like, I think this is what's going on. I put something on Instagram. People were like telling, saying that word. And then I sent photos to my brother. He checked with this really renowned eye doctor he knows. And he was like, it's a Chalazion. And so I was like, here I, here I am again. I'm the doctor. I'm the doctor here. <laughs> Fuck that little kid that told me it was this other thing. But it was pretty bad. It it got a lot worse. And the day that we flew to Philly to go to Delaware, it was like at an all time high. Like it was so big. My eye was shutting. It was like swollen shut. I was using the hot towel in the on the plane as a hot compress. So everybody's texting me on the way to the airport. So on Wednesday, you I'd seen you on Wednesday and it looked red and puffy, but I was like, it is gonna go down. It's fine. And everybody, as I was going to the airport, um, your fiance and our like big group of girls were like, is she okay? And I was like, yeah, Ashley like gets worked up about medical stuff, and then she's fine. And she'll handle this. She's totally fine. I got to the airport. I was like, things are not fine. No, you think you have a sty. Yeah, it's like a sty pro max. <laughs> like the Shalazion is like the D1 athlete of styes. It's such a hot mess. And I was like, this is crazy. It looked like it was filled with fluid, like against your your yes. nose. Like it went all the way down the crease of your eye. It was looked like when I got my nose done. That's how puffy that eye was. Yes. Like it, my smile looked off. Like everything was fucked. And so 
I was just like, I just kept doing like hot compresses and I was in touch with the doctor and I got, the, people were giving me recommendations and Brittany, who recently had a shalazi on, was helping me out and I got it down in time to even like put a contact in and a little bit of mascara on by the day. But you can still see it. I mean, it still looks red. It was just, I mean, it was, it was something. Well, okay. Here's what I thought was good about it. Not that, but I... Afrique is a great photographer, and I was yeah. like, we're going to have to edit this. And then it was at sundown when – you'll tell the story later, but it was at sundown when he did it, so I knew you'd be wearing sunglasses. Yes. And I was like, this will be great for the story. Yeah, it's like, insane. what if she just had no problems and nothing funny happened? Like, no, I, I've already started writing jokes about it. No, I was also, like, so. Shalazi on, that sounds like where I'm getting married. That's yes. like, we're going to do, France. <laughs> we're going to do the ceremony on the beach, and then we're going to have the reception that there's Shalazi on. <laughs> oh, it sounds like a town in, like, the south of Italy. Yes. Today. Well, <laughs> my fiance said it sounds like a Pokemon, which is also pretty accurate. If we're not, we're not having kids, but if we did, obviously our firstborn, Shalazi on. And the second one would be named Blufferettos. <laughs> Shaws and Bluff. Ashley and I don't believe in only children, so Bluffy. <laughs> um, so I was like, this will, I was excited for the comedy aspects of it yeah. for you. But I wanted to give a health update on that. It looks great now. So the main question everybody asked and asked me, and obviously you, is did you know this is happening? So like, were you like on the plane in Philly? Like, do I just ask Raina, like straight up, is this happening? You would have gotten nothing out of me. I'm amazing. But you are. Uh, <laughs> You're the best one. <laughs> I kept hearing people throughout uh, the weekend just drop loans, and I was like, she fucking knows. She knows because of you. <laughs> Something happened right before it went down. And I, the way you, it was Buck, and the way you looked at him, you had daggers in your eyes. Like, and you'd I, been waiting for hours. I was like, I hate you. Yeah. They had told me they had just like left the house to get down there. And he was like, we've been here since three. And Reyna looked at him. I mean, you, I thought you were going to kill him. <laughs> so, listen, I mean, I know that he wanted to surprise me so much and of course I was surprised but I did have a feeling just because it's like what I wanted mm -hmm. I, like I was talking to Andrew Collin about engagements and he was like I think that couples who know they're gonna get married when it's the appropriate time they've been talking about it and they are really in sync like always kind of know and that might not be everybody's story I know people have been completely surprised and blindsided and it's so special and wonderful but yeah, I mean, it's a it's a credit to him that he knew exactly what I wanted. That's my dream. And I know that that's the only time we would be there in Dewey yeah. before the end of the year. I knew he wanted to propose to me this year. He's said things about the ring and he'll, he was always like grabbing my finger and he we've been talking about this. So this wasn't like a surprise and I had said either I'm sure I had told him or told Rainer or whoever. I think anybody close to me knows that I would want to get engaged in Dewey with all my friends and family around or I'd want to get engaged at a show. I mm -hmm. have never thought that I would want that in like just us private in some destination. I know it's a lot of people's dream to get engaged in Lake Como or wherever, you know, like some people were like, I thought it was going to happen in Banff and I wouldn't have wanted that. I want to be like, it's such an exciting thing. You have like adrenaline and you want to be around your people for me, for me. I'm sure yeah. people want like private, private and celebrate in private, but I'm like, I don't want to call anybody. I want them all to be there. I, it just, that was my absolute dream. The backdrop of Dewey, the Bay during sunset is my dream. Like, I'm not saying I've been dreaming about this my whole life. You know, I've been going back and forth and even getting married in the first place. But when I do think about it, we all think about it. Most of us, that was what I wanted. He knew that. Yeah, I had a feeling. And then I'm just, you and I, I mean, I was, I've said this all the time. I was like, I should be an FBI agent. I don't miss anything. Like little things that feel not even crazy or weird, but just a little out of the ordinary were kind of tipping me off throughout the day. Like nobody did anything. Yeah. I mean, we joke about the thing that Buck said, but that was a moments before it even happened. And then I walked into the lighthouse in Dewey and we'll kind of walk you guys through what happened. And it was, felt like an engagement party. I mean, it yeah. felt like all my friends and family and the excitement was like so palpable. And then, you know, he was like, let's go out to the to the pier and or the dock and get a photo. And I was like, oh, my God. And then I just started to like feel really shaky. Well, we didn't speak the whole way over. I feel like we were like walking the plank. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it was crazy. Um, but 
So if you guys are newer listeners, Ashley and I take this trip to Dewey every summer. This is like my eighth summer doing it. This is like her 20th summer. She goes every summer. And her whole family is always there. And like your oldest best friend, Corey, yeah. is, mostly comes down. Yeah. And Lee and Laura, your other good friends. Like it's the weekend. Everybody's there. So yeah. like that's what I would want. It's like everybody's already conveniently down there. Yeah. Why and, would I not want to do it that weekend? And a lot of people asked how long have you been talking, you know, did you talk about marriage, engagement? I mean, Yeah. When he proposed, he, again, I blacked out, but he said some things along the lines of, like, I knew I've wanted to marry you since I met you, you know, and I just think we knew really early on, like, we were each other's person, not Im- immediately, but pretty early on. And we had a conversation last year, like, when we made it official, when we were in Cabo for my 40th birthday, and we were, like, laying on this boat, and, I mean, again, we were had already been dating, he was there with meeting all my friends, it was on my birthday trip, but that was when we made it, like, official, and when we had that conversation, we talked about kids and you know we'd already kind of mentioned he knew I didn't want kids I was like I just want to be sure this is something that you really feel like you don't want because I'm just it's not I'm not gonna want children and I just if you change your mind you have to tell me and it was a pretty heavy conversation to have with like a new partner and then he was like that's I've talked about this in podcast but in case you guys are new around here you didn't you don't remember it or didn't hear it and he was like that's I don't want kids and I but I marriage is important to me and I would want to get married and I know you've said you're not really into it or you don't know if you want to get married or you don't really see the purpose of it but like it is important to me and I was like I would get married and I think at that moment I was like I think I'm going to marry him like I just I don't know why we wouldn't it just felt like the right person and of course who's to say but I think I just kind of knew I think he I don't know I just knew he was the, the person and we went to Dewey a few weeks after that and that was the first or the next weekend actually and that was the first time we said I love you and he said like something really clicked for him on that trip and maybe he knew then that's where he would propose we had the conversation about marriage and me getting married in the first place last year and then we started talking about the actual wedding details randomly kind of like end of the year like Mm -hmm. I think we both just knew we were going to end up together and so like around New Year's it was just one of those weekends where we were watching some show it came up we talked about where we would want to do it and maybe at that time I said like I would be okay not getting married in Dewey it's kind of hard to get to and you know it's just but I feel like that's where I'd want to get engaged I don't remember exactly but People just keep asking, like, how long have you talked about this? How long have you known? I was like, we've just kind of known. I mean, he says stuff all the time. I can't wait to marry you. I mean, it just was like one of those things that we both knew was happening, I guess. So it wasn't such a surprise. Like, I did know we were going to get engaged this year. I think we both knew that. I don't – I think as you get older, it becomes less of a surprise. Yeah. I think that, like – you're just, you know yourself, your partner knows themselves, and you're just like, this is the person I'm going to be with. Obviously, we're going to get married. Like, it becomes less of a just like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. Like, most people our age have helped pick out the ring, have helped, yeah. like, figure out what they want, when they want to get married. It just, it feels like a more, not adult conversation. You're certainly an adult when you're, like, 25. But, like, even when I was getting engaged, I was, like, a kid. I was 28. No offense. Um <laughs> I, my mind was like, how many times am I going to bring this up? And at no, which point? Bring it up um, when I was 28, I got engaged. And even I knew, like, we had talked about it. We're going to get married at yeah. this point. And, like, I started sending him photos of rings I liked. I mean, you just kind of know. Yeah. I think it's fun to be completely surprised by anything. Yeah. I just think I'm a hard person to do that for. And well, I think this relationship was like, we know we're going to get engaged. Also, I feel like. It would have been weird to propose on the... I was thinking, like, does he want to um, propose on the tour? But I think it would have been, like, a little disappointing to be in that Dewey trip and not get engaged. Like, if everybody was there, all of our friends, and, like, you were like, oh, you, d- you didn't decide to do this now? Well, <laughs> I was not trying to think like that. I think that's, like... <laughs> I think that was the time to do what yeah. I was saying. Like, like, to wait until, what, we're in Vegas in a couple weeks? Yeah. I was just or, like, this is the time to do it. Yeah, or, I mean, I thought it would be, like, at the end of the year, like when you could get my family maybe to come to Boston, something like mm-hmm. that. I mean, obviously my family being there was going to be really important. But so that answers the question. I had a feeling and he still did an amazing job. And, you know, I think he so badly wanted it to be this amazing surprise. But it's like, well, we, you know, we know each other so well. You know, this is what I wanted. You like you just made my dream come true, Aww. which is yeah. more important than like throwing me off. That's also a nice way to reframe it. Yeah. Like, you 
listened to me. You yeah, this is what everything I've... I've ever wanted. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't have been somewhere else where you would have, yes, surprised me more, but this was like the most important thing. And yeah, everybody to ask about the rings. I decided I wanted this. I didn't send it to him. I showed you. It's a ruby. It's not a red diamond. Someone said, Ashley, I looked up red diamonds and they're so expensive and so rare. So maybe I'm going to go with that. You're it's a red diamond. Um, it's a ruby. That's my birthstone. I didn't want something traditional. It's got this hidden halo and I... I love it. It's what I wanted. And he got me what I wanted. And our friend Anushka, who is a jewelry designer, who's done other s stuff for me, did the ring. And that was nice for them to, to collaborate on them together. And that's kind of the story behind it. That was like the bulk of the questions everybody had to, wanted to know. Because it like is different. It's, and it's not pink. People, there was like photo where it like looked pink. And it's people thought I had like a hot pink ring. <laughs> so sorry to disappoint anybody <laughs> that thought I had like a hot pink ring. All right. So I, I think we should like the whole story of him like proposing, okay. but um, we'll just think a couple of our partners will go back into it. Okay, so I'm gonna tell you guys about seed because Raina is not <laughs> able like, to get. I'm incapable. Of she it. is not able to get through these. So we love seed, and it really is something that a lot of women can benefit from. In case you guys didn't know, nine out of ten women have an unstable vaginal microbiome. So that is why seed came to the rescue and created VSO1 vaginal symbiotic to restore a healthy vaginal microbiome and sustain regulated pH levels. Like Raina said before, you never know who's going to come into your life and throw off your vaginal microbiome. <laughs> And sometimes it's worth it and sometimes it's not. Uh, but this is great. And we both, you know, pay attention to what we put in our body. And this is just really important to kind of maintain that health down there. They have rigorous scientific testing. And we just appreciate that they have a commitment to the science behind it. So it really does work. Just like your gut has a unique microbiome, so does your vagina. The vaginal microbiome is your natural defense system and key driver of gynecological, urogenital, Raina's favorite word, and reproductive health. So important. Day-to-day -day things like menstruation exercise, diet, stress, sex, and more can easily disrupt your microbiome, leaving it susceptible to imbalances and unwanted issues. So basically VSO1, it's an ongoing system that maximizes efficacy with minimal impact on your day-to-day -day life. The intensive first month reset helps rapidly replenish an optimal vaginal microbiome so you guys can get that. And then all you need is the sustain, which is a simple ongoing two tablet monthly schedule designed to help maintain a stable vaginal microbiome and regulate pH. So again, just like I said, just two tablets a month after that first month with the reset and it's just gonna get you back in order and really just keep you balanced down there and we're big fans of everything that they do so you guys can find your balance and get proactive with your vaginal care with vs01 from seed go to seed.com slash gge and use code 25 gge to get 25 percent off that's 25 percent off vs01 at seed.com slash gge code 25 gge Okay, and most people think they spend about $62 per month on subscriptions, but the real number is closer to $300 a month. Oh, my. God. What? How are you guys letting that much money walk out of your bank account? So <laughs> thousands of dollars a year, um, which is probably forgotten about. And thankfully, I started using Rocket Money, and they found a bunch of subscriptions that I'd forgotten about and helped me cancel the ones that I don't want. I mean, this really is a game changer. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps lower your bills so that you can grow your savings. So with Rocket Money, I have full control over my subscriptions, a clear view of my expenses. I can see all my subscriptions in one place. And if there's stuff I don't want, Rocket Money can just cancel cancel that for you. I love how the dashboard shows me this month's spending compared to last month. So you really can take control of your spending habits in general. And Rocket Money has over 5 million users and has saved a total of 500 million in canceled subscriptions, saving members up to $740 a year when using all of the app's features. So go get yourself a luxury bag mm. with all that money. Stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash GGE. That's Rocket rocketmoney.com slash GGE, rocketmoney.com slash GGE. Okay. So again, we were on this vacation. We had this really wonderful time with my parents and we were staying in this beach house in Dewey. And I just want to tie two things in. Um, one of my favorite moments of the weekend was we had like all been to this dinner God damn it. and this <laughs> at the sushi restaurant called Culture Pearl we love. And we get back and it was just like a funny night. We were like laughing, having such a good time. And we go back to the house, and I don't know what I – what did my dad pour himself some Hennessy? Yeah. He poured himself some <laughs> Hennessy, and Raina goes, Lee, you are such a sexy daddy. <laughs> and it happened in – this is my dad. It happened in, <laughs> in slow motion because I heard her say sexy, and I was like, what is the next word 
going to be? It can't be worse than sexy. It can't be worse than sexy. And then it was daddy. And the way the record screeched, we were all like, what just happened? My mom's in the room. Then they sat down on the couch next to each other. And my dad put pillows between them. He was like, Raina, I'm keeping my distance. I was like, is this happening? And I have to tell you that I woke up the next morning, <laughs> the day of my engagement. And was, no, I was, woke up the next morning, the day of your engagement. And I was like, maybe nobody will remember. Maybe nobody heard me. But as it was coming out of my mouth, even I was like, how is this happening? I was looking down at myself going, stop it. Stop these words. And I just said it. And the next morning I was like, maybe nobody remembered. Yes. Maybe nobody knows. And. <laughs> So, yes, I woke up and I rolled over and I was like, babe, remember last night when Raina called my dad a sexy daddy? <laughs> Did you even know what was happening as it was happening? No, I didn't know what was happening. I don't know how daddy came out of my mouth. I told him either. Lee, I just, I was like, look at this man just pouring himself a Hennessy. It's, and I just, in front of your mom, like, am I, I wish I could be like, I was so drunk, you guys. I didn't know what I was doing. No, I wasn't. I had like one drink. I was not that drunk. That was crazy. I know. You weren't even that drunk. We and the next it. morning you were like, talking about this on the podcast i was like oh my god i can't up i'm never embarrassed i'm so ripped but like it's just like it's your family it's your dad your mom was there louisa was there everybody looked at me like are you okay listen reina and my dad flirt and it's not weird <laughs> because they're not related and reina is, your age, mom's in the room. reina is age appropriate yeah. and it's fine <laughs> so <laughs> what is my dad talks about a hot jar that he just farts yeah i flirt with your dad too but then he really gives me the ick when he's farting all over the place no i'm just kidding bill i love you um i know you're listening so i bring up my dad because people asked if if he asked my dad for permission which is so funny i'm 41 (laughs) can i have your daughter's hand i mean no one's ever been able to tell you what to do (laughs) yeah my dad's like she's gonna do yeah just ask her i I have no (laughs) ask her for permission (laughs) can you imagine my dad's like she's never asked me for permission for anything in my life it sounds like you don't know her at all um no i'm kidding i thought it was really sweet and just very traditional but he asked them back in june and i have to tell you like they i know that he had some time with my parents solo when we were at my parents farm back in june and when we were walking out we were saying goodbye and my dad says to him thanks again for the conversation and i whip my head around i go what conversation and my dad recovered very quickly and he was like what we were just talking about like his family and you know he recovered wow. but what kind of language is that I- Thank you for the conversation. Sparkle Eyes immediately texted me. Lee gave he, it up. Wait, he did? Immediately told me. that. Wait, that are you Lee, serious? Yeah, Lee, that Lee said to him, thanks for the conversation in front of her. He goes, she knows. And I didn't want to, I just didn't want to like burst his little bubble. So I was like, no, she probably didn't notice that. I was like, it could go either way. My dad really likes him. Anyway, so he did talk to my dad and my mom and Matt. I know. It was really sweet. Like, what do you I, say to Matt? Just like, I just, I want your blessing. I do. I like the, like, when your dad was retelling us the story that, like, Sparkle, I was just, just like, I want you to know I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to love her. Like, I think that, like, with the quote-unquote asking for your hand, like, yes, I, I know. think I'm it's joking. this respectful thing to, like, say to somebody's parent. Like, I just hope do you this. know I have, like, the best of yeah. intentions with this person. No, it's really special. And he said that to Matt, too. So, like, that's... Oh. Yeah, no, I know. It's not like, will you allow me to marry this 40-year-old woman? He asked Um, me permission, though. (laughs) And Raina. Yeah, he had to really make the rounds. Okay, so we'll just, like, run through it. I I mean, I think we kind of said most of the details, but we all went down on this vacation. Saturday was the best day ever. He and I woke up. We walked and got coffee. We walked on the beach. And then we went to Laura's house, which is our favorite house, our favorite day of the summer. She cooked everything from scratch. We usually do like a kind of a catered lunch. She made everything. Everybody was there. Corey was down. She had, you know, childcare for her two, three kids and her husband. And it was just like, it was so fun. Matt came over, Matt brought Jay over. They swam in the pool. It was just like the best day. It couldn't have been more perfect. We had this incredible lunch and the Clemson game was on, even though they lost. Only good weather day of the trip. Most, yeah, most perfect weather. And that was what we did during the day. And then again, like Laura was like, okay, everybody out at four. And Matt came over and he was like, hey, we're going to meet at Lighthouse at 530. And it's just, listen, the thing is, is I'm always the one kind of coordinating and making sure, not, Laura is a great planner and so are you, but like with my family and my friends, I'm the one kind of like, hey, we're all going to meet here. 
and do this. And Matt's usually like, well, I got the kids and this and that. So for Matt to be like, hey, we're going to do this. And he was super casual about it. He didn't do anything wrong. But I was like, I kind of, that's a little out of the ordinary. So what I told him to do um, was weeks before, like, because I knew you got, I knew you'd given everybody the plan that we were going to go to jam after Laura's. Yes. And I was like, which is like a live music thing at a bar. And I was like, tell her, mom and dad just feel like you're ditching them tonight. Like, can we just meet them for a drink before you guys go over to jam? Like, I said, blame it on Cindy and Lee. You've got to blame okay. it on them. Yeah. But instead, he made it a little too casual. Yeah. And also, Sparkle Eyes had said, like, I don't know if we want to go. Do we really want to go to jam? He was kind of saying, like, I don't know if you want to go to jam. Because I would have dressed differently. But he was very much on like, I don't know if we're going go to go to jam. And I was like, all right, well, I'll wear this see-through skirt. So jam, it's just, it's live music. Um, it's like you dress in like bikini top and jean shorts. I mean, it's like messy. Your feet get beer soaked. I mean, the whole thing. I tried to convince him to propose there. At the jam. <laughs> At the jam. <laughs> <laughs> what, like go up on stage? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to convince him to do it. So I was like, Laura was like, there's this band. It'll be really fun. Laura was telling me what band was there. And yeah. I was like, guys, hear me out. What if I call the band, I like DM them, and I get them to let Sparkle Eyes come out on stage and propose? And Laura goes, he's not going to do that. I was like, I'll take care of this. And so I texted him immediately, absolutely not. No. And I was like, oh. and I was like, well, you guys met on stage. I was like, I'll be with you. And he okay. was like, under no circumstances. All right, well, you know. That was your one L. That was my dream. Yeah, of the, <laughs> of the planning. So we all go to – go to, and when I run the tape, like, it's just – I don't know. He, like – I remember we were getting ready, and he was like, do you think our outfits look good together? <laughs> like, uh, it was just, uh, which is what we would make. I don't know. There's this little things that were in my head of, like – but Ashley, like, don't psych yourself out. And anyway, we get there, and everybody's there. Lindsay and Buck. Buck's so, – and Lindsay, meanwhile, an hour later, was like, we're going to head down. And then we get there. Buck's like, we've been here since 3. We had to stake out a good spot. People don't listen For to what? Me. People don't listen to my exact verbiage. So – and by the way, so we're walking into the lighthouse. And the, if you guys – it's Dewey Beach. It's on the bay. It, like, it overlooks the water. And the sun sets on the bay. We walk into the lighthouse. And as I'm walking in, five dudes in, like, Trump – gear are like walking out i'm talking like maga hats deplorables like gear i w it really was it shook me to see it i don't like to see it it was like i this is my like hometown like this is my spot you know my whole i just i hate seeing it what, what i mean you know and so i'm like what is going on so i said to my brother i was like that kind of threw me to see all that trump stuff in my face like a group of people like in here in this town you know what I mean? Joe Biden's homeland. You know what I mean? Like right next to Rehoboth. And so – and then Matt's like they're all out and these these um, boats are in the bay. They're, it's like essentially like they were rallying. Like there was the thing that went out. They were like going to meet all these pontoon boats in the bay and like kind of do a Trump rally. Like So you see these boats, American flags, not a ton of Trump flags, but like one. And guys, please, this is not like what Dewey's like. It's just not. I mean Delaware, the beaches, it's more liberal. Like I, I'm, that's why it was like so jarring to me. And so I see them in the bay. And I'm like, oh, my God. And as we're walking out, I start to feel like like so lightheaded and like I, th I think this is like about to happen. And I'm like, I literally had the thought if there's a Trump flag in these photos. Well, it's funny because your brother like knows you so well. So I went down to the lighthouse five minutes before you with your brother <laughs> and Afrique was there. And your brother told Afrique there's all these Trump flags on these boats. Like shoot around them if you can. And I was like, we'll just edit them out. Yeah, like, you'll whatever. just edit them out. But then everybody else is shooting too, you know, whatever. So there weren't any. There was like only one with like a true Trump flag that like, you know, had left by the time we got yeah. out there. So anyway, we're in there. We say hi to everybody. We get drinks. And then he, Sparkle Eyes, was like, do you want to go down to the pier? and get a picture but he was a like, quick with it like we'd only be in there like, five minutes I hadn't even like had to sip my drink he was like do you want to walk down and get a picture like we always do not that out of the ordinary but Raina is following behind and I'm like okay so again it was like this silent walk where I was like what's about to happen something is feeling a little weird well he was like how do we get on the dock and I was like ask me to take a picture yeah. of you guys and I'll come out with you but he like didn't really say that in front of you so the three of us should just walk in the plank yeah, he was like, let's go to picture. So we're walking. I'm, and he was kind of walking behind me. And I'm like, where is, you know, it, it was, it's just. And so we get out there and I'm like, it's happening. And he gets on one knee. and I just completely black out. I mean, it just, again, like as much as I had a feeling, just it's still such a amazing like surprise. And I was hearing him sort of. He was saying like, I, I mean, the most beautiful thing. They need to mic these guys up because no one remembers. 
And so he's saying these things. And I'm like, I can't believe this. I, am I, I didn't know when to put the ring on. Like, it was just so crazy. And so we're hugging and all of that. And I'm taking it in. I, and I, like, come to out of this blackout. And I see a freak who is the, our photographer who shot our Philly show and our New York show. And we know him. And we met him on Hannah Burner's Bachelorette and at her wedding. And he's there. You got him to come down and shoot it from Philly. And that was, like, an insane surprise. And so I was, like, losing my mind over that. And then, meanwhile, everyone's cheering all around probably even the Trump boats. No, the whole bar erupted. And there was like fans. And Buck was telling me that there was like a table of like girls got to eat listeners. And they were like, is that Ashley? Is that Ashley's boyfriend? Wait, is, is she getting engaged? <laughs> and people were like watching it. It was like a spectator sport. The whole bar erupted. I blacked out. I yeah. was shaking. I didn't know what to do. I told you. I told him I would film it. I completely forgot. Let's jump in right here. Always hire a photographer. You cannot trust your friends and they should not be responsible for this. No, no one is going to be able to get what they think they can. Like the, the photos and videos, we'll put some on screen for you guys that my friends were sending me were like a blind person did it. Like Lee has a photo. It's the, the, the boardwalk. Like it's her she, name. It's her name. Yeah. It's nobody. And it's, they shouldn't have to. Like you really want this documented? You hire a photographer. It was just also the, nobody decision. was at the right angle. Like, yeah. Because he, I thought he was going to drop down on the side so that I could see both your silhouettes and he dropped down with his back to me and so I was like only a freak was on that side to get you guys yeah. and so if he hadn't been like everybody else's photos is just of Sparkle's back yeah no I mean <laughs> he just you if you want it documented you cannot trust other people because they won't in the moment they'll, they'll forget and they should <laughs> it's really special Raina should have filmed that whole time and she was just like not I'm shaking I was just I like know. so nervous because he also so his pants were fitted he dresses nice and so he was like I can't fit this ring in the in my pants yeah and he'd given me the ring before and I I was like, I'll start taking pictures and then I'll hand you the ring. But as you guys were walking, he started like waving his hand around to try to grab the ring. And I was like, I I, I thought you were going to see me because I wasn't prepared to hand it to him. Oh my God. So I just blacked out. Yeah. Everybody blacked out. And so I go up to the bar. Everyone's there. And then his friends had come down, like five of his friends, like his best friend who just got married a couple weeks ago came with his wife. All these people came from Boston. It was like so special. That was a huge surprise. And I just have to tell you, Raina, one of my favorite comments <laughs> that I've been like saving for you. There's like, you know, a million comments on the post. It says, also, Raina would be wearing cowboy boots at a time like this. <laughs> I really went back and forth on those cowboy boots. I was like, is this too extra? At a time like this. At a this, time like this. Got me. But like, of course she is. I just was like, I, what do I wear to this? Because like, I was like, I don't want to look like I made this about me. And the cowboy boots sort of felt like I made this about me. No, it was perfect. I was trying to look cute. But you, Lee, and Laura all wore the same white outfit. tank or bodysuit with jean shorts and the Raina spiced it up with the cowboy boots, but they always dressed alike anyway. So uh, they always were in the same outfit. Not planned. They just, they just share do. a brain. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, the only thing anybody really wears in Dewey is jean shorts and a bodysuit. So yeah. that's the uniform. Except me. I wore a see-through skirt, pussy out. I was like, her whole vagina, are we going to be able to see it? People are like, no. did you know your skirt was see-through? I was like, yeah. 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 I mean, that's I know point. you couldn't see some of the photos you can see my butt crack and I, had to kind of edit, edit those a little bit. But yeah. where the light was hitting. Yeah. Um, yeah, I know what I was doing. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I don't want to make this too much about me. But you guys are also like so much taller than me. And I knew we were going to take photos. So I needed like a little heel. People asked if Reyna was going to officiate the wedding. Yes. <laughs> Be I gave Matt first right of refusal. And I he told Matt he it. can take it back. Yeah, I've officiated my brother's wedding, and he was just like, I would be too nervous. I don't want to do it. And I was like, even if you had a full script, he was like, even with a full script. And so I was like, I don't want you to be nervous. So, Rain, you know, defer I'm to Raina. I'm honored. Um, I'm very excited. And I told him, even if it's five days before he wants to take it back, he can. And so we did that, we stayed at Lighthouse a little bit longer, and then went to Starboard and had like an impromptu, not impromptu, it was planned, but it felt like an engagement party right on the spot. And Matt had gotten, to, you know, them to let us use the VIP area on a Saturday night on a holiday weekend. Crazy. People were like, who gets to do this? Just from seven to nine, by 8.50, people were like pounding at the door. The line like, was two blocks long. Yeah, the Crazy. line was around the block and like we're whole, like holding down this whole room and so you know they let us but our friend Kat bartended and it was just like really special to be able to celebrate there and it's just so funny because like Corey got engaged at the Starbird and mm -hmm. she's there and it's just like my favorite place uh, and then you know we got some pizza and went home and he drank a little too much my fiance drank a little too much and he has never we always say like Dewey gets you Dewey always wins and Dewey has hadn't won with him yet he's always made it out alive he's never had like a go home early have to like miss a thing and he do we got him he doesn't get fucked up like us. he doesn't get yeah he, he doesn't just, he's just he has a couple beers steady yeah. 
but I think he was nervous. So he drank all day. And I told him, don't drink Alora's. And he like, he had lunch, but then I don't think he ate enough. And so he doesn't do anything crazy. He just like no. couldn't hang all night. And he came home. And we all, everybody came home, whatever. And yeah, he was passed out, like face down, clothes on. And so no, there was no engagement sex <laughs> that night. And we woke up at like six in the morning and he woke up and he was like, I'm really sorry. I'm like, you don't have anything to apologize. You're for you're fine. It's Dewey. I just I think he had like a really stressful few days. Yeah. Like I think every single day he was like, I'm so nervous. I'm so excited. I mean, I think the amount of adrenaline for days like it's a lot to come down from. And yeah. he said every guy was telling him, like, make sure you eat, make sure you oh. eat enough, make sure you eat enough. And he didn't really have a dinner. None of it. Yeah, we didn't. We had some apps. And so, yes, the engagement sex people asked was 6 a.m. the next morning <laughs> it was amazing Aww, it was really wonderful it helped with the hangover and I think that leads me into giving tips on how to have sex with your family in the house thank you I've been honestly thinking about it the whole time so I mean you just keep it quieter mm -hmm. it, the bed didn't make any sound or anything I think you know sometimes you're in an old house or whatever the bed's gonna creak that's gonna be your giveaway and I, that was not the case it was a nice bed like really nice like base around it and Here's my tip. Do it at unsuspecting times. So we had sex at like 4 p.m., like before happy hour, <laughs> blowjobs and all. Good for you. When like we could hear you guys downstairs talking. Like you, Were you no like, I'm not going to let him change his mind on this? Suck at his dick right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, like he literally got out of the shower. I was like, I feel like sucking a dick right now. I'm really trying to get that ring this weekend. No, he, I'm telling you, like, some, no one expects it at 4 p.m. And then people are, the house isn't quiet. Do it when, like, the people have, there was music on, you guys were talking. I mean, I like heard you and I was like, I, I should not be hearing Raina's voice while we're, really we're fucking. But like, yeah. I, that's my hack is like midday, 4 p.m., you know, everyone's showering, getting ready. Like, it's not a dead silent house. You did it in the bed? I thought you were going to do it like in the bathroom or standing near like a dresser because like those things don't make noise. The bed just didn't make noise. It was really solid. That right. bed was made for, for fucking on a family vacation. But your dad was in the house. He was the in the house. Time. And I was like, if I hear his voice, it's going to take me out of it. I never heard it. Never heard Matt. Matt hadn't come over yet. Oh God. And so that's my hack. We had sex like a few times like and I was proud of him because I was I was worried. He was like, your parents are in the house. I was like, we're all adults here. And I would die if someone heard us. No one heard. No one heard. Yeah. And you so, know that your mom would have waited until the exact moment when everybody was together to let everybody know. Like, that she, she heard me. Raina having phone sex. <laughs> my mom heard Raina having phone sex. Uh, twice. On my brother's wedding weekend. Yeah, twice. So that's my that's my hack for fucking on a family vacation. Day, daytime, everyone's showering, getting ready. No one's paying attention. People are talking, laughing, music's on. That's the whole thing. You slept under the radar. I was like, is she even going to try to have sex with him like, and solidify this ring? Yeah. <laughs> No, I came down for happy hour, like freshly dick in my mouth. That was my appetizer. <laughs> yeah, you really did it. I was wondering when you were going to do it. I figured the bath, I think it was bathroom. I was like, um, how are we doing this? Well, your dad stayed downstairs with me, not in the same bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> Her and my dad were in the outdoor shower. I'm trying to think of some other questions. People asked about where we're going to live. I mean, obviously, we're long distance engaged. Uh, if, I mean, the plan is that he's going to move to L.A. for a little bit. I think we both want to end up back in the East Coast, the three of us. And my dad asked me yesterday, how is this going to impact the podcast? And I was like, what? What? And he was like, like, what, like where they decide to live. And I was like, he will decide to live where we decide to live. <laughs> All three of us. Um, I know that, that we're in a throuple. Yeah. So that's the plan. I mean, we'll, I don't want, want to say anything's set in stone, but, um, you know, I think Rain and I at least want to be in LA for another year. I mean, who knows? Yeah. But I mean, our families are on the East coast and there's a chance your brother could come back here and we'll see. So I think that's where long-term we all want to be still always looking to buy a house in Delaware, but I think, you know, we want to be together and he can, work in LA easier than I can work in Boston. I, the plan has never really been for me to live in Boston. It's no shade. That's just like not where we're going to be, not where our friends are. And he wants to change and he loves LA. And yeah, I love LA. It's the best. Yeah. And, you know, moving back to New York to uproot all three people would be a lot. Not everybody wants to move to New York in their 30s. It's a hard life. Yeah. So we'll move in our 40s. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I asked you this question, and I'm wondering if people, like, asked you this. How do you feel about – I know the answer is, but, like, how do you feel about wedding planning? Were you, like, minute one, like, got to look at the dress, no. got to look at the venue, I want to pick a date? Like, how pressed are you about this? Zero pressed. We got to get through the tour. <laughs> I'm going to throw another event into the mix. <laughs> I'm planning the tour. 
You know, everybody's different. I think some people are just like, as soon as they get engaged, everybody's like, when are you guys yeah. going to get married? And I don't, I don't think you're in such a rush. I don't even know where I want to get married. Yeah. I always thought it would be Dewey. I don't, I, that was enough for me. That was perfect. I think LA would be great. I yeah. would do something in Boston. Matt was like, there's really great venues like in Delaware, like in the nor- in northern part of Delaware, Philly. Philly. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I want something that feels meaningful to us, but I just want like something that also is good for our guests. I want people to easily be able to get to it and have a nice weekend. I don't want to br- – I've talked about doing it on my parents' farm. I just think that would be really expensive to bring everything in, and it is a little trickier to get to, too. But that's still a thought. I think it's nice to just enjoy it for five yeah. minutes. You know, I think everybody's dreams are different. I think some people have, like, Pinterest boards and mood boards and everything just, like, saved, and they're like, it's go time, baby. I feel a little anxiety around it. It feels like really something I want to not really think about. We have enough on our plate. I don't feel in a rush at all. Good. That's great. I don't and- want this long f- – years long engagement of course I think he's gonna move to LA and like that's the next step and that's the next thing you plan and everybody's dream is different but I think a lot of our friends have gotten engaged and sort of just been like eh I'll get to it when I get to it yeah (laughs) yeah however you you want to do it so that's that's kind of where I'm at it felt very like out of body it still feels like I was like, am I reacting appropriately? Like, I was like, I feel like out, I'm watching this from above. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It was a lot of attention, which we're used to, but in a different way. Uh-huh. So I, it's just this, you'll never feel it until the moment you feel it. Like I was saying to him, like, you're going to black out. It's fine. Like, yeah. he was like, I'm not sure what I'm going to say. And I was like, just, you can say it to her again later. You know, like you can do it a second time. Also, like, you're just going to black out. It's just going to be nervous and it's going to feel crazy. Like, how could you ever know what that would feel like? Mm-hmm. You know, I just think it's so exciting. It's so fun. Yeah. So th- just we'll wrap this conversation up. We'll give you guys a couple racks. Thank you to everybody. I mean, there's so many comments at people love, love. Like we were saying, like even all the comedian friends in the comments, like not even anything funny, just like <laughs> th- so happy. Everyone like loves love. It's pretty crazy. Rain and I were saying like we could run for president and we'll still never be as many comments and s- likes as you get from an engagement. People will just love it. I, lo- I love it. I'm not saying it's just like it's interesting to see and it's really lovely to see. And I think there was like one kind of funny comment. Chris Stefano was like, you did it, bitch. <laughs> that was that's all he could even muster. As yeah, first person I <laughs> yeah know. exactly. But there were some funny ones from our listeners. And just I just want to thank everybody who like put this on their story or commented or even whatever just sent me a message like that's like I've been here since the beginning or not not however long you've been here but really the people that like I've been on this journey since 2018 I've like known you single I've known you dating like I just um I don't know I I kind of forget that you guys know everything about me and Raina and our and our dating lives and you've just been along for the ride and the way that people were like, I screamed in a restaurant or, you know, I couldn't wait. I told my friends or there was like group chats about it. And I just, it is like overwhelming in the best way. Like I forget sometimes what we do for a living and how many people listen to us talk and the lives that we touch and the people that are invested in us. And um, so just like, thank you guys for being along on the ride and being so happy and supportive. It's <laughs> like crazy, the comments and the support. I love you. I'm so happy. I love you. you. I just, I, Raina is the MVP of all of it. I couldn't, couldn't have done it without her. (laughs) Um, So I just thank you so much. I just am so lucky to have you as a best friend. Thanks. I'm just like, I'm over the moon for you guys. I love him so much. It's been nice to get to know him through this process a little more. And I'm just so excited. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's thank our final partner. And then that'll lead us into just a few recs for you guys. No, I'm all choked up. I know. (laughs) So as I'm going to be a Mormon wife, uh, (laughs) we would like to tell you guys about the secret lives of Mormon wives. (laughs) Yeah, guys, The Secret Lives of Mormon Wives is coming to Hulu on September 6th, so this week. And this is a show I cannot wait to binge watch. I've actually been watching it, and I'm really enjoying it. This is a group of Mormon moms that grew up in a very conservative Mormon faith, so pretty strict rules, no cursing, tattoos, piercings, alcohol, even caffeine, and really the need to be like the perfect wife. These women blew up overnight on TikTok and were fully in the spotlight when Taylor Frankie Paul announced that she and others in the group were involved in swinging, and now they're coming together for a new reality series that gives you an inside look at the secrets lies and gossip of mom talk i mean i've been watching it it's a really interesting watch it's really different than any other reality tv show i've seen you guys can watch it this week watch the Mm. hulu original series the secret lives of mormon wives coming september 6th streaming on 
Hulu. And that brings us to just the final segment. I mean, this is a really exciting time Ugh. in television this Exciting specific time television. week. So yesterday, as this airs, yesterday, Wednesday, September 4th, Tell Me Lies season two premieres. Ashley and I were crazy about the first mm. season. And the two leads have come out that they are a couple. Unreal. I mean, PR what move. could be better? No, I'm kidding. I'm sure it's real. But <laughs> still, the timing, the hard launch. It's the sexiest show. I'm Ugh. so turned on by the lies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the theme. It's shot so well. I mean, it's these kids in college and just sort of lies and deception between all of them. And I'm obsessed with it. It's so, so good. I cannot wait. Oh my gosh. And then um, today, as this airs, The Perfect Couple comes out on Netflix. Um, this is a book by uh, Ellen Hildebrand, if you've ever read that any of her books, she writes a lot of like Nantucket Bay. All of the, her books, I think, are based in Nantucket. This is about a couple that's getting married mm, in Nantucket, a very wealthy family, has a house there. And on the night of the rehearsal dinner, the maid of honor, who is played by Megan Fahey, who we love, is murdered. So it's it's I a thriller wait. about who killed her. And it jumps a lot back and forth, the book does at least, between timelines, trying to figure out who did it. And I loved the book. I am over the moon to watch it. So that's on Netflix this week. Okay. And then again, the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. Those were like our three. We have a couple more we're really excited about, but that's we'll save it till next week because it's next week. But those are this week's. Pre- There's probably more, but. There's some more. Yeah. But they're next week. Yeah. Okay. So big week. <laughs> uh, and then Ashley and I, final rack, we watched a, a movie when we were on vacation um, called I Used to Be Funny. It's on Apple TV and it's about a girl who's a comedian who's experienced a traumatic event that you sort of un- then unfold throughout the, sh- the movie that stops her from doing comedy and creates some mental health issues. And it was really well done and a beautiful movie. We loved it. Yeah. I don't want to give it away. I think you're not supposed to. I, I want to give a trigger warning, but I don't want to say what happens. I, you know, there is a trigger warning on it. But again, I, I just it's like you kind of are figuring out in real time this girl she used to nanny for goes missing and she's involved in it and it was perfectly done it takes place in Toronto and Rachel Sennett is the lead and there's these really funny comedians and there's some people I recognize and they talk about like JFL and Montreal and different things like that and so we thought it was like a perfect movie we watched it as a just the girls me Raina Louisa my mom and my aunt so that was really fun yeah I loved it yeah well I think this episode has been a long time coming. I'm so excited to do it with you. I'm so happy for you. And I know our listeners are also happy for you. And I'm excited to celebrate this on the tour with you. I've been getting really emotional thinking about you walking on stage in Vegas and people like really Oh, my erupting. God. I'm like not even going to be able to be out there with you. I'm just going to be in the wings of Ryan no, crying. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan will carry you out. <laughs> then Ryan yeah. proposes. <laughs> No, this no, is Remy the year I'm going to stop wanting to sleep with Ryan. I just, <laughs> uh, but I really get emotional thinking about our audience just like erupting in cheers for you. Ugh. I'm not even going to do it function, so... We cannot wait to see you guys on the tour. It's really <laughs> happening. We have all the themes posted on our Instagram. There's a theme for every run. And it starts on September 21st in Vegas. And we cannot be more excited. And Monday, you guys are going to hear an episode that we recorded prior to the engagement. So I'm going to call my fiance, my boyfriend. And it's going to feel a little dated. But it's still a really fun episode. And it's about cheating. And we're really <laughs> excited about it. But we did record it in advance. So just a heads up on that. May as well say that now. Because yeah. it's locked and loaded and ready to go out on Monday. Uh, but we wanted to come in here and do this for you guys in person in New York where it all began. So fun. And we love you guys. Girlsgotteat.com. That's where you're going to get those tickets for the cities that we still have them left. Girls Got to Eat podcast on Instagram and TikTok. I'm Ash Hess. Raina is Raina.Greenberg. No, I'm not changing my last name. Also, while we're here. And that was a question people asked. I've well, not Never. And subscribe on YouTube. Share this episode with a friend. Thank you guys all again for the support. And we love you. And we will see you Monday. See you Monday, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye. 